Hi everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I have an unboxing to do today and it's a uh, journal cover that I thought would be fun to look at together. I've only seen these online. Um, I kind of debated about buying it, um, but so kind of my thought process was I was looking at, this is an A5 one and I'll show you and talk about it more in just a second, but I was, um, kind of looking at leather ones and I saw several that I like. I liked these Galen leather ones. I liked um, that hand stitched leather tee, but they're not like you can't place an order right now. Um, I was looking at Maker South. I was looking at other um, online makers and sellers and so forth. And I just thought, I don't know if I want to, um, spend that much money because I keep saying I'm not going to buy more leather covers and I really do feel kind of like I'm at a good point with them but what got me rethinking was do I want to try a different size planner so one thing I did was to make this cover in an A5 this is kind of like a faux leather look I put a little bit too much of this rusty red color on there, so I'm not real happy with how it turned out. It's probably producing a huge glare. It looked good for a while, but it doesn't really look like leather, but it's kind of kind of cool. I measured it on um, with a Lockby A5 journal. And let me just take this one out here, because this is a little bit what I'm going to talk about. Anyway. I take it all apart. When I measured it, it was big enough, but it almost doesn't seem like I made it quite wide enough. And I'm just thinking because, I mean, there is room there, but I can't, now that this is like stiffer, it's really hard to get the journal all the way into the back of that where the spine is. But my suggestion was going to be if you're not sure about a traveler's notebook or a notebook cover, whatever you want to call it, um, make a little something and give it a whirl. I did that for a while when I was considering the personal size um, insert, and I made just some laminated covers with cardstock. And it just gave me an idea of how it would feel to carry that. It's not nearly as satisfying to have, for me anyway, <laughs> to have plastic or laminate as a cover as it would leather. And if you're considering leather though, I think it's just a good trial way to see if that's a size you like. I used to not like the size at all. I felt like it was way too big. I first got into this kind of journaling traveler's notebook world a few, uh, four or five years or so ago, and I was really drawn to the standard narrow size that just looked different and kind of quirky to me and kind of fun and a little bit out of the ordinary. And there's something about that size journal that drew me into this. I've always journaled off and on, but this was a whole new game for me. And having always liked paper and writing, that was a fun, hobby and habit to um, develop. Anyway, all that to say, this just seemed too big. One of my um, friends loves the A5 size, and I was thinking, oh, I don't know, it's just so big and normal looking. But I have been using my other Lockby journals um, in their cover. Maybe I should, should grab that. Let me get that. always good to have things handy. I thought I was prepared, but um, I wanted to kind of explore the idea of a bigger cover for journaling. And this was a reasonably priced option, and it's a um, United States um, seller, and I so I wanted to support a seller from our country, and so I thought, well, I'll try the canvas. I, I liked the zip of the Galen. I really wanted that effect, but I just didn't think I wanted all the stuff in the front cover. And then they have a notebook cover that's a very simple design that looks beautiful also, 
and I've thought about trying that um, but again I was like I'm just not sure I don't know so that's why I got this thing but um, this let me just talk about this just for a second I showed this the other day but I really like this experience this is lightweight it's very durable it gets kind of you know scratched up or a little bit dirty like like your leather might so it develops its own character and it was something different and I just thought it was fun um, and I have thoroughly enjoyed this I think I, I like this pocket setup especially because it's not real bulky you get some good storage but you're not having a lot of bulk storage things sticking up it, it's just very flat so when I write in this Kanzanoto notebook, this is where my little story is contained, I can just keep it in here and there's something that I enjoy about just having the cover around it. And I have come to really like this size for this longer kind of writing. I think I would also like it for doing a um, kind of a memory keeping book like I currently do in my narrow slash standard size. So um, also I love this thick elastic. I love that. I want to know something very substantial and sturdy about that that appeals to me. And then Galen Leather also has that folder one or folio or portfolio I think they call it that has that big thick elastic and I think that's so cool. I almost bought that. It's not like I need it. So that's why I just kept hesitating. Like I just need to think this through a little bit. Um, and just kind of my mind went all over the place. So I'm kind of thinking out loud to you, but I'm trying to relay the thought process. So I currently work in a, um, my planner is a, Jaboon Techo, let's see, it's the B6, I think it's the B6 size, not B6 Slim, maybe, I think it's B6 Slim, I like that a lot, um, but what I have found is I tend to, I'm all gung-ho at first, and I'm coloring in these things, and I'm keeping track of Amazon purchases, and I'm tracking the different health things that I want to do, like drinking water, making sure I walk every day, um, do this oil pull thing, this, that, and the other. And I'm all good about flipping back and forth and doing that. And then I have found that I just don't keep up with a meticulous system, or um, maybe that's not quite the right word, but a detailed um, I'm going to say cumbersome. It wouldn't be cumbersome to everybody, but to me, it becomes that. And I had bought little stickers, and I thought it would be a little memory-keeping book as well as a planner. And I, it's kind of redundant because I memory keep in a different journal. So that has fallen by the wayside. Also, the Jibun Techo I should be showing you in the back. And in the front, it has all these extra things. It has maps of Japan, which are cool, and the language is, um, written language is very pretty to look at um, but it's a lot of wasted space so there's my preface I decided to try I looked I mean I was like binge watching exploring figuring out what size planner might be a better fit for me I I didn't want to have something big like this I liked the streamline and I thought, well, if I need to carry it anywhere, it'll be easy to transport. But I really, I just don't do that. So I, I, um, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I still have some kids at home. I am home-based. I don't have a job that I go to. And if I ever need to take my planner, I can just pick it up. But I have not really had that kind of lifestyle where... It's an everyday carry because I don't carry anything anywhere. I go to the store and I run errands for my husband's company, and that's about it. So, um, the company he works for. Anyway, this seemed like a good middle-of-the-road option. So, this was less than $25. I was looking for the olive color, and it was out on Amazon. 
I was going to order through Jet Pens, but I didn't, you know, to get the, the free shipping, you had to do 35 and I was going to order some ink, but I was still undecided about the ink. So I thought I don't need to buy something just to get free shipping. I will just go ahead and buy it from Amazon. Amazon did not have the, what am I trying to say? It didn't have the um, olive, but then I thought, they have an orange and I like orange. It's in like the color scheme of colors that um, are good for me, that I enjoy and I'm comfortable with. I watched several videos and I thought, okay, I'm gonna take the plunge and I'm gonna try this. And if I end up not liking this style planner, I won't be out a huge amount of money. This is wrapped really securely and I'm sure it's, oh, here we go. I'm sure that's really crinkly and loud. My apologies. <laughs> Get that out of the way. It's so much fun though. I love that sound. Okay, um, there's a way to do this thing and I read some reviews and some people like it and others don't and that did not appeal to me at all to have this plastic binder system that is, you know, just comes with the book. And somebody said, yeah, the paper is just not that good if you're going to do fountain pens or whatever. It's just kind of a paper um, that's, I guess, sort of there, neutral. This is Cordura. Um, so I saw some people talk about that, and that's a, this type of fabric, and it's sort of like a canvas. It has a, a rough feel to it, but it also feels sort of um, slick as well. So this pulls open, but I don't want to talk about all that because I don't, that's not my thing. I, I don't care about that. I do not like spiral. That thing, I don't know if it's being left-handed or what, but it gets in my way and I don't like them. And I think that's some of the reason why I stepped away from this size planner because everything at the store is um, spiral. And I don't need like a fancy planner, but I do like it. The paper I bought. Okay, I know I said it somewhere. Um, it's right in front of my face. I, the thing that I bought from Lockbee, this is so funny. I'm like standing here and I can't find my notebook. Oh, goodness sakes. There we go. I was hiding under my other notebook. Sometimes I wonder about myself. Anyway, this is fountain pen friend friendly paper. It's Traveler's Notebook. I mean Traveler's Notebook. It's um, Tomoe River. And so I thought, well, I can do everyday planning and use my pens and the endless supply of ink I have and that I keep accumulating, which I like, don't get me wrong, but I thought I need to use that stuff and I wanna use paper that I can use my fountain pens on. So I decided to try the Lockbee Planner, which is a new thing or fairly new for them, new to me to see that they have that. This is supposed to be A5, it's the stitched binding, 72 pages, it doesn't say on here that it's Tomoe River, but um, they do say that on the website. And it is designed in the US, but assembled in Taiwan. So if that is something you consider, there's that. I actually like this um, orange. It's not a bright orange. It's not like um, a pumpkin orange or like, you know, a sunshine orange that you would use in crayons. It's a, a rusty, like a burnt orange. I think that might be a good description. And this looks to me like it's black. This is more dark brown, which I like. I like browns and oranges. And the black is okay because um, this is a color that I, I like. So the if it were like bright pumpkin orange and it would look like Halloween, which I love, but I don't want a Halloween journal every day. So seems like it's, um, this is just like bendy here. There's nothing in the spine. I mean, maybe a little bit, maybe it's just the two pieces of fabric, but it's reinforced on these edges. 
I don't know if it's cardboard, I don't know if it's plastic, and it does have these, as you can see, which I doubt I will use. They are white and brown. And maybe it's supposed to be black, maybe it depends on how the light hits it, but it looks brown to me right now. So, that is a very nice fit. I know some people will slide another book here. And I've seen people on YouTube that were talking about their, let me show you this again. It's this Lahit. It's funny because I don't see that, oh yeah, right here. Lahit Lab A5 cover. I think it's got another name like stretch cover or fitted cover, something like that. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, other reviews talk about it and they have put books in that are quite thick. So as you can see, this is a bit of an overkill for this little bit of an insert. But I could get a thicker one if I decide to use like um, the A5 Stal yeah, is that what I'm thinking? The Stalogy or one of those bigger Hobonichi or something or just a bigger book. It will fit in here. This is just a six month planner. And it ha it's kind of set up like the Jibun Techo that I have and I guess the Hobonichis are also set up that way where it has the month, all the months, and then all the weeks. It has lots of planning space here. It does start with Monday and end with Sunday. Somebody commented on on Lockby website that they did not care for that, um, wish it weren't that way. I think the only confusing part for me gets to when I'm copying the dates from a regular calendar to this, I have to remember this is a Monday start and not a Sunday. But it's got enough room, you know, for all the things I would put, birthdays, anniversaries, whatever, family function. It's, it's a very minimalist, they said. So somebody commented, if you don't want to do a lot of this, that, and the other in your planner. This is a nice, very basic planner, and I have come to see that that is how I generally do things, a more simple way. What this doesn't have is a tracker, and again, that's one of those things that can bog you down, but it can also be helpful. For me, I just like it because it helps me keep um, my mind on things that matter to me. So what I might do is take some graph paper and make my own just little mini trackers that I can stick in, you know, something this size, maybe even half or three quarters of that, something like this. It would be super easy to write up each week and I'll just put my main things that I wanna get done and washi tape it maybe to each week. And it's small enough where it's not in the way, obtrusive, is that the right word? So um, I thought I could flip it, but I think just having a little tip in could be good. I could even take it out each week so it doesn't bulk up too much, I don't know. I have been thinking about that for a few weeks now. Um, the things I, I, well I told you, but mostly health things that I like to track, but I also find it helpful to track keeping track <laughs> of my kids. So I have mostly adult children now and they don't all live at home and I just want to keep up with them. I want to at least send a text or say hi or ask if they have children, how are the kids, or I just want to be an encouraging presence in their life. And I, I know it sounds silly that I'll forget, but I if I have a tracker saying that, then I can be, oh my goodness, I haven't talked to Paul in two weeks, so I can send him a text or something like that. It just helps me be like, okay, your priority is your family. What have you done for your husband? What have you done for your kids? Are you cleaning the house? I don't like to clean house, really, but if I have it on my tracker, then I can be like, okay, I did something today to maintain my home. So. I do basic things. I don't really track the weather. The Jibun Tetsu had a section for that, and it's kind of fun, but it's like, I uh, don't really need to do that. I guess it doesn't, I enjoy the weather and all that, but I don't feel a need to track it. So I use the tracker as a reminder um, to keep up 
to maintain the things I have committed to. Maybe that's the best way of saying it. That's a little bit of a ramble, but I just think that um, that might encourage some of you that you don't have to put on there all the things you see other people putting on. Put on your tracker, if you choose to do that, what matters to you? What are you called to in life? What do you need some nice reminders to, to do? And then you can just kind of mark it off. Um, and that's kind of satisfying and it helps you stay on track to or keep up with what you're trying to keep doing on a weekly basis. So that was a little bit of a ramble there, but that's where my thinking's been. This has got all these little grids, um, little lines, I guess, marking space. I'm not sure what that's for, except that maybe if you want to, I, I guess that's probably what it is for, if I want to separate this out. Yeah, I think I saw somebody do that actually now that I say that. So what I might do is just put a line down here and just use a little column for um, menu ideas. We're very flexible with menus, but I need to have some idea of what we might be eating so I have groceries in the house to accommodate that. Otherwise, I'm winging it constantly and that ends up, I mean, I like, I don't mind kind of being flexible, but I, I like to have a little bit of a plan and I have some groceries on hand. So I will probably make a section for groceries, but I, I do like this horizontal. The Jibuntecho is up and down and I got used to that and that was okay. But I think this is just a little bit more me and it gives me a good amount of space for each day. So when some of my kids are working and I say, please write your schedule on my planner, I, I might assign them a, an area on here where I can find it at a quick glance. So anyway, again, Monday through Sunday and a place for notes. Ooh, I didn't notice that when I flipped through here. That could be a tracker place. I could just um, do several of these ahead of time. I'll have to think about that, but this might, I don't know. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. We'll think about it. It's flexible. Nothing's set in stone. I think there's some, should be some freedom in trying something for a while and if it gets boring then try something else. I, I think a fresh start oftentimes helps rejuvenate our motivation that may be a little bit lacking. This I just want to show you. Uh, this has a couple little pockets here like card pockets. Since this is going to be kind of a household planner at least to start out with um, Probably what I'll do is stick our postage stamps in one of these, and then every so often, you know, there's this and that you want to hang on to. Might put doctor's appointment cards there, or just paperwork stuff that I need to do something with but not right at that moment. I usually stick that in the back of my planner, so this little flap would work for that, and I suppose one could do this and put another planner behind it. That actually it holds that pretty pretty securely. Not bad. But I think I will do this for now. And also I could slide it through there, but um, I kind of like having it be flat like this. Another thing, thinking a minute, about the leather cover. I did have my Jibun Techo, techo in um, one of my Sojourner covers, and they're beautiful covers, but they were sitting on my kitchen counter area, which we call the office, because that's like mission control of the house. Um, I, it was sitting there like this, so you never really saw the cover. At the end of the day, I rarely closed it. I just had it open. Um, this might need a little training. I think that these stay pretty flat, but I think it might be because of this it's flipping. Um, anyway, if I'm not going to see the cover, why have the book in the leather cover? So I thought this less expensive item, I could not feel bad about it just sitting there open. And then if I want to close it just to tidy up the look, if people are coming over or something, I can. I can still grab this and go. On the rare occasion, I do bring my planner. But for the most part, it sits open, so why have an $80, $90, $100 notebook that stays 
open and unseen. So that was part of my reasoning on getting something a little less expensive. This is um, the strap that you use to close it. So it closes from the back. I do like that look and I like the journals that I've bought that have this elastic closure. I kind of wish it was on the front because I, I like how that looks, but it's got the pocket. So that's okay, not a big deal. But I like the ease of that. I really like the um, zipper A5 covers I've seen, specifically the Galen one. I, I love that, but I might need to do something like that for a journal that I'm going to write in and I can zip it shut and put it away. But for the planner, I just felt like that was just more than I wanted to spend for that. This is just talking about the fabric, this Cordura, which before this I'd never heard about. Stylish, okay, I'm stylish now, durable, lightweight. Resistant to tears, scuffs, abrasions, designed for living, built to last. So that sounds, that sounds like a good thing. Um, anyway, that is my new planner setup. It'll probably be several days before I actually step into this, but I'm excited to give it a try. You know, August is just around the corner. My youngest son will be um, going back to his, we homeschool, so he does a co-op for a lot of his schoolwork. So it's kind of fun, you know, a little fresh start as we start the new school year and my daughter goes back to college and so forth. It just kind of, kind of fun. So there, I have gone on long enough. I hope this was fun to see. And if you're going through some questioning of your current planner lifestyle, um, I'd be interested in hearing what you like or what works well for you. It's different for all of us and no two people's journey needs to be the same. And just, you know, I, I'm learning just because I see it on a video and I'm really drawn to it I'm, I, I do need to stop and think a minute if that will work for me and I've decided that this is a good solution for me I hemmed and hawed about the the leather not really wanting to spend the money and I thought you know this might be a really good thing so I think it will be I also thought if I don't end up liking it as a planner there is um, there are other things that I can use it for. I can put one of my new notebooks in here and use it more for just a, a regular journaling. And I do want to say if I didn't, I'll just add this, that this is a six month thingy, not a, not a year. And I kind of like that because if it ends up being like, eh, I don't really like it, I don't have a half a year for them wasting like I am with the Jibun Tejo. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for watching. Appreciate any comments below about your planners and how you like to stay organized and if you are more meticulous or a more um, like minimalist planner just chat it up let me know what your thoughts are thanks we'll see you next time